Welcome to the Applied Biosystems Tech Talk video series, where we break down real-time PCR to make it easier for you. Are you new to using Applied Biosystems CyberGreen assays for qPCR or having trouble getting accurate results? Let's talk about how to design and optimize qPCR experiments when using a CyberGreen assay for detection. First, be aware of reverse transcription or RT bias. We know that variability attributed to reverse transcription is far greater than the variability of qPCR alone. This increase in variance may be caused by factors such as reverse transcriptase efficiency, RNA integrity, and secondary structure. The reverse transcription step is therefore critical for accurate RNA quantification. When converting RNA to cDNA, nearly all reverse transcription enzymes have the potential to introduce RT bias. When this happens, the type and amount of cDNA generated won't correctly correlate with the amount of RNA in the sample. You can test for RT bias by reverse transcribing twofold dilutions of a known amount of RNA, then running a qPCR standard curve for each assay and endogenous control. A standard curve generated from an RNA dilution series incorporates the variability introduced by the reverse transcription step. It should be linear, with a target slope of minus 3.323. Once the cDNA is generated, make sure to use the right primers for qPCR. You will need to use a bioinformatics tool to design your primers, such as Applied Biosystems Primer Express software. In general, primers should be 20 nucleotides in length, with a GC content in the 30 to 70% range. The last five nucleotides at the three prime end should include no more than two G or C bases to avoid specificity issues. Finally, the amplicon should be short, generally between 50 and 150 base pairs. The next step is primer validation. The objective is to find the right concentration of forward and reverse primers to achieve the most robust assay without nonspecific amplification or primer dimers. This is accomplished by running multiple qPCRs with three different concentrations of forward and reverse primers in a matrix format. The appropriate primer concentration range is determined by the specific master mix you plan to use. For instance, Applied Biosystems PowerTrack CyberGreen Master Mix works best with primer concentrations in the range of 300 to 800 nanomoles, so all the tested concentrations should fall within that range. Getting back to performing experiments to optimize primer concentrations, the next step is to evaluate the CT and run melting curve, also known as a disassociation curve, for each primer concentration combination. If the disassociation curve indicates the presence of primer dimers, there are two options. A, start over and redesign the primers, or B, alter the cycling temperatures to remove primer dimers. The last step to ensure that your primer set yields usable, reproducible data is to make sure PCR efficiency is within the 90 to 110% range. You can do this by simply running a standard curve with at least five logs of input DNA and using the instrument software to calculate the PCR efficiency. And remember, if primer design and validation seem too complicated, you can always use applied biosystems TACMAN master mixes and pre-designed TACMAN assays instead. This removes the primer design variable and ensures the best possible primer set for your experiment. Thanks for watching. For more information about CyberGreen Master Mix experiments, TACMAN assays, or reagents, visit thermofisher.com slash qpcr. Find more applied biosystems TACTalk videos at thermofisher.com slash TACTalk.